Okay, so let's continue with the uh, binaural interaction test, uh, which essentially assesses the binaural processes that are dependent on the intensity and time differences of the acoustic stimuli. So if you think back to early in the semester, where we talked about interaural timing differences and interaural intensity differences, that were involved <coughs> in uh, sound source localization. Uh, there's a test that we do that really looks at brainstem that looks at superior olivary complex uh, activity and it's called the masking level difference test. Um, and let, So let's go through this real quick. Um, if you remember I, I always say that the ears, the auditory system likes when uh, things are different between ears, meaning that um, if you look at this visual here, A, in the right ear you have a pure tone, in the left ear you have a pure tone that's in the same phase. And you know it's in the same phase because the starting point is the same. Okay? Um, and then you have some noise. So if you're trying to detect uh, a particular sound <clears throat> trying to detect a tone and they're in phase so they're very similar and the noise is similar then the auditory system doesn't like that because there's no there's no difference really for the superior olivary complex to detect now look at the second picture you have same noise you have this signal at that starting phase and then you have this signal 180 degrees out of phase. So guess what? The auditory system likes that because there's some kind of timing difference that it can pick up on and say, okay, um, there's, a, there's something present because it's different. Okay. Um, and then the same thing here. If you have two of the same noises and then you have a tone uh, in one side, um, then uh, it's easy to detect uh, because the noise is consistent from here to here. You have the tone. And basically why I show you this is to remember that the auditory system likes when there are differences in phase or intensity or some difference between the right ear and the left ear. Okay, And this is called what we call the masking level difference test or MLD. Uh, I think it's important you get a little bit about the test because if you get into a situation where you get a referral and the child has uh, APD, right, and you're now, okay, here are the results, you know, we'd like you to develop some kind of activities. <clears throat> um, usually the report from the audiologist will have uh, a description of each one, but I think it's important that you have a kind of general understanding of APD testing. This is one you folks will do a good bit of, you SLP folks. Uh, the TAPS 3, uh, you may have used this in the clinic already. Um, here's the uh, age range um, <clears throat> that it's uh, useful for, um, and it's part of an APD battery. Uh, SLP audiologists and sometimes educational psychologists will uh, administer the TAPS-3. So here are all the subsets of the TAPS. Word to scrim, phonological segmentation, blending, uh, numbers forward, numbers reverse. Now in those you can already, um, you should be able to, to, to tease out that, hey, auditory processing, there's some memory component to it, right? They have to remember the numbers. Um, and that's why that controversy has always existed, because <clears throat> nothing is purely auditory if it has a memory or phonologic, some kind of language component, okay? Um, the only way to really test pure auditory signals uh, or pure auditory function is to use signals like white noise or other kind of things other types of noise that don't have uh, uh, a language component. Okay, so you have numbers forward, numbers reverse, word memory, sentence memory, auditory comprehension, and then auditory uh, reasoning. <clears throat> 
So they put together these uh, basic skills, auditory memory, auditory cohesion, which is a high order processing, the comprehension, the reasoning. And so they have these scores based on clusters of performance. So the way we assess, and we basically, I think ASHA says that a score of two standard deviations or more below the mean for at least one uh, ear uh, on at least two different behavioral central auditory tests um, is what we use to, um, uh, to uh, diagnose APD, okay? Some people might use other scales. I think I've heard where it's been, if somebody scores uh, three standard deviations even below on a subtest, they will consider that. But usually, um, <clears throat> it's usually at least two standard deviations on two test uh, behavioral test measures, okay? Or one standard deviation or, or three standard deviations on one test. So let me repeat that because I butchered it. So typically you have to score uh, at least two or more standard deviations below the, the mean on at least two tests um, or three standard deviations below the mean on one test. Okay. Now intervention, there's some different ways we do things. Uh, direct skill remediation. This is auditory training. This is some of the stuff you'll be doing. Compensatory strategy training. That's when we try to teach students to, to, to uh, do things differently, basically. Environmental modifications like FM systems, uh, modifi uh, preferential seating, different things like that. Technology FM systems, that sort of thing. And then computer-mediated auditory programs, still some controversy uh, as to their effectiveness, but those are um, options. So when we talk about kind of uh, top-down processing and bottom-up processing, the way I explain this to, to audiology students <clears throat> is that basically the bottom-up pro processing is like taking the acoustic signal, breaking it apart, so it basically starts with the acoustic signal, right? And it's it's based on a kind of more rudimentary process. When you talk about top-down processing where you're taking expectations or um, cognitive strategies and so forth to uh, aid in whatever task they're doing, um, we always talk about metacognitive strategies. So thinking about thinking. So children who are a little bit older and know they have specific areas of weakness or difficulties, metacognitive strategies can sometimes help them. Just you know what's going to happen. You know where your difficulties are. You need to think about a new way to think about it, essentially. Um, <clears throat> so here's some uh, direct skill remediation, auditory training, um, just different different ways to train the auditory system um, to function in a more efficient way. So again, this is a bottom-up uh, treatment approach, okay? Um, and again, these are all just ways that we, uh, different skills that you can remediate. Compensatory training is one, uh, compensatory strategies training is a top-down approach it seems to be very helpful and so basically strengthens these higher order um, cognitive resources language function memory attention here's some metalinguistic strategies so schema induction and discourse cohesion activities uh, context derived vocabulary building so taking vocabulary they know putting it in context and pulling in the vocabulary, phonological awareness, semantic network expression. You guys should know what semantic networks are. So you kind of you build the relationship between words and so forth. Metacognitive strategies, self-instruction, cognitive problem solving, basically figuring out what issues arise and how to deal with them. Okay. 
<clears throat> environmental modifications could be bottom up or top down bottom up enhance uh, the signal so like FM systems um, top down accommodation so preferential seating different things like that here that falls under there use of visual aids reduction of competing <coughs> signal and rever reverberation time most of you have seen a classroom that has had well you guys are young enough that you might even have gone through school with classrooms that had tennis balls on the bottom of seats I am too old for that. Nobody cared if what we heard and how noisy it was in the classroom. Um, but, um, but yeah, so that's one of the ways to reduce the signal, uh, to reduce the noise and the reverberation time. Okay. Any kind of uh, um, sound absorbent material on the walls, some teachers will put up sound absorbent material uh, like uh, panels. You know, some people will put up some kind of like, ru like not rugs, but like some kind of artsy stuff that uh, will absorb um, sound. Uh, and so technology FM systems are highly used. Um, <clears throat> and you should know what an FM system is. <clears throat> if not, just Google it. I, I, but I'm sure everybody knows what a, <clears throat> a frequency modulated system is. So there are different computer-based auditory training programs. Fast forward was very controversial. Aerobics was very cheap and expensive. It was games, uh, had memory stuff. I used to recommend it all the time, even if the child was like borderline, whatever. It's just fun games for kids to play. I've never heard of, I've never used brain train, but aerobics was a fun one for kids. So the goal of the intervention is to provide the individual with CAPD the ability to communicate more effectively in everyday context. And so most of these kids uh, will have either an IEP or if they just require uh, an FM system, they'll have a Section 504 accommodation, which I'm not sure if you learned about those. Um, I'll probably post some information about the, IE, the, <coughs> the ADA um, IDEA and the Section 504 because I think that's important for you guys to know and I'll probably do a little um, uh, a little recorded lecture on that um, and so I think the one thing to, to remember between um, IDEA and the Section 504 accommodation is the goal is a free and appropriate education. FA fate right? Everybody talks about that. Free and appropriate education. If the child has some kind of, let's say, APD or some kind of disability that does not affect their educational performance, uh, then sometimes they don't qualify under ADA and they will qualify under a Section 504 accommodation. So we used to have to do that for FM systems uh, a lot. So we would they would go through that 504 accommodation and not really through the special ed, the ADA stuff. So anyway, I'll do a little PowerPoint on that uh, or a little discussion on that. And that ends the APD section.